Hello everyone and welcome to Cryptography Home. In this video I'll be explaining the Playfair cipher and how it works. But first of all, let's look at a brief history of the Playfair cipher. Now the Playfair cipher was invented by Charles Whitston who first described it in 1854. However, it bears the name of Lord Playfair instead for promoting its use and that's why it is known as the Playfair cipher. So this encryption mechanism is one of the earliest to operate on digraphs. Like I explained in the first video, the introduction to cryptography video, a digraph is simply a pair of letters, which means that the Playfair cipher will encrypt pairs of letters at a time. Therefore, it is much more difficult to decrypt than simple stream ciphers like the Julius Caesar cipher, which I explained in the last video. So stream ciphers, uh, for those of you who do not know, are uh, encryption mechanisms which encrypt a single letter or a single character at a time. But the Playfair cipher operates on digraphs, which means that it will encrypt a pair of letters at a time, which makes it much more harder to perform cryptanalysis or to decrypt by a third-party intercept. So for those of you interested in knowing more about the types of ciphers, you can check out the Introduction to Cryptography video, which is the first video in this video series. But moving on, the Playfair cipher was used during World War II by the government of New Zealand for communication. So like I said, this is just a brief history of the Playfair cipher for those of you who are interested. So now let's move on to how the cipher actually works. So to implement this cipher, it uses a 5x5 five five table containing a keyword or a phrase. So the first step is for you to come up with a 5x5 five five table which will contain 5 rows and 5 columns. Of course, initially it will be empty. So given the key Playfair example, what you have to do to fill in this 5x5 five five table is you list the elements of the key. So you start by listing P, L, A, Y, F, and then the next letter or character for us to list is an A right here. But since we already have an A uh, in the initial cells, we don't have to list the A again, but we can simply list it as a subscript, I'm superscript I mean, just to indicate that uh, there is an A. Which means that when you're filling in the table, uh, when a letter occurs for the second or third time, you don't have to fill it in. However, you may list it as a superscript if you wish just to indicate that there is supposed to be that letter. So basically, that is what we'll do. So we'll list play, fair, which ends here, and then we'll proceed to list example. So we have E, X, A has already been listed, so we don't have to write it again. M, P has already been listed also right here. L has been listed right here and E has already been listed right here as well. So we do not have to list those letters in other cells. So now that we're done listing our key, you see that we'll still have empty cells to complete in the table. So the next step is to list the remaining letters of the alphabet. So this uh, to list the table, there's two steps. The first step is to list the letters of, of the key, and the second step is to list the remaining letters of the alphabet. And this key will be used for us to be able to encrypt or to decrypt text. So the first letter is A, but since an A has already been listed, we don't have to list it again. Then we'll list B, then C, then T. So we'll keep listing the letters in that order until we arrive at the last letter of the alphabet. And like I said before, letters that have already been listed, such as X and Y, X has already been listed right here, and Y has already been listed right here, do not have to be repeated, but you can simply list them as a superscript just for indication purposes. So the other rule when you're, list, when you're creating the table is that we make the assumption that I and J are interchangeable. This means that if you've already listed an I, you do not have to list a J again, which is why right here I wrote I is equal to J. And likewise, if you already had a J, for example, instead of E, let's say you have a J. So since you already have a J, you do not have to list an I again. We make I and J interchangeable because the alphabet contains 26 letters, but our 5x5 five five table only contains uh, 25 rows. So to make sure that the entire alphabet is filled, we'll simply be using the mechanism of making I and J interchangeable to solve this problem. So now that we've formed the 5x5 five five matrix which we'll use to encrypt, the next step is for us to manipulate the plain text. So the following rules apply when you're dealing with the plain text in the Playfair system. So to encrypt a plain text such as hide the gold in the stream in the tree stamp, so a plain text is simply the message that will be encrypted. And to encrypt this message, the first rule is to remove punctuation, characters, or symbols. So let's say you had a question mark or a comma or uh, a full stop 
the rule is you have to remove those elements when you're encrypting because the 5x5 matrix does not contain uh, characters such as those. And the next step is to identify any double letters in the key phrase and insert the second occurrence with an X. So if you have double letters, for example, in the word tree, we have double letters, EE, -E, which means what you do is you simply insert an X in between the two double letters. So instead of tree, you have TRE, then X in between, then you list the E. And the reason why we do this is to make encryptions or decryption slightly harder for an interceptor. Well, the moment you insert an X in between, you solve the problem of having some sort of patterns within your plain text. Because if you have two E's that are next to each other, uh, it would be like a pattern which will make it easier for a third party interceptor to identify and to be able to perform cryptanalysis on your message. The last step is to append an X to the end of the plain text if it has an odd number of characters. So let's say with this plain text, including the, including the X that we just appended, if we have an odd number of letters, let's say you have 21 letters, you simply append an X at the end of the plain text. And that is the third rule. And the reason why we do this is because of the fourth rule, which states that you break the plain text into letter pairs. So like I said, with the Playfair cipher, it works on digraphs, which means that it will work on pairs of letters. So to implement this cipher, your uh, pairs are broken down into letters. So you have H, I, then D, E, and so on and so forth. So since you're implementing letters, if you have an odd number, just to make sure that everything is in a pair, you simply have to append an X at the end of your plain text. And having done that, the algorithm will then be able to work on those plain text elements. So in this uh, slide, I just illustrate how the plain text is divided into pairs. Our plain text message, uh, hide the gold in the tree stamp, has been written in pairs. So we have hide the gold in the tree stamp. And you may notice that we have appended an X in between the two E's as the rule states. So now that we have uh, changed the plain text into a digraph, into digraphs rather, that will allow us to perform encryption. Next, we have to look at the actual encryption. So to encrypt the plain text message, the following rules will apply in the Playfair cipher. The first rule is that if the letters appear on the same row of your table, replace them with the letters to their immediate right respectively. So when, you're aware, when we're encrypting the plain text message, we'll be using the 5x5 five five table that we uh, came up with before. And if the letters that you're encrypting are on the same row, what you do is you simply replace them with the letters to their immediate right. And we'll see how this is implemented when we try to solve for the exam. And also, if the letters appear on the same column of your table, you will replace them with the letters immediately below respective. And that is the second rule for the Playfair cipher. The last rule is that if the letters are on different rows and columns, you replace them with the letters on the same row but at the corners or the edges. So these right here are the three rules that we'll be using to apply uh, to encrypt our plain text message. Now let's look at how we can actually encrypt our plain text message using those three rules. So the our plain text message is hide the gold in the tree stamp and we've separated in into digraphs as the rule states. So in this uh, video tutorial, I'll be illustrating how to uh, encrypt these the following pairs. So we'll be encrypting H I D E E X O L and X D, which are available in this plain text. In addition, I'll also be illustrating how we can encrypt these other uh, pairs, which are not available in the plain text message, just to cover all the scenarios for encryption with the British Playfair cipher. So we we'll start with H I. So to encrypt H I, we have to identify its position in the table. So first of all, we identify where H is. So H is right here and I'm placing a circle around H. And I is right here also. So you can see that from the diagram. So since they're on different rows and they're also on different columns, it means that the third row, the third rule will apply, which states that if the letters are on different rows and columns, you have to replace them with the letters on the same row, but at the corners or at the edges. So our message HI is in this, uh, so I'll just form a rectangle. Oh, so the rectangle is coming out badly. So I'll form a rectangle around this message HI. So what you do is you simply replace it with the letters at the edges, which means H will be encrypted to a B. 
which is at the direct edge of H and I will be encrypted to an M which is at the other end as well so H is encrypted to B and I will be encrypted to M which is at the edge next off we'll try to encrypt uh, DE so to encrypt DE as well we have to identify the position so D is right here and E is right here so since these two are on the same column it means that the first rule will apply so the first rule no the second rule which specifies the columns and it states that if they're on the same column you replace them with the letters immediately below respectively so since we are applying the second rule D will be encrypted to an O which is directly below as the rule states so D has been encrypted to an O and E what is directly below E is D which means E will be encrypted to D and that is how the cipher works so the next thing that we'll try to encrypt is EX so we encrypt EX like I said I won't encrypt we won't illustrate how to encrypt all the letter pairs but then we'll just encrypt the pairs that will show all the situations that you can come across with this cipher so with EX our E is right here and X is right here so both are on the second row so in this case we'll be using the first rule which states that if the letters appear on the same row you replace them with the letters to their immediate right so our first element is E which means E will be encrypted to an X which is at the direct right and X will be encrypted to an M as the first rule states so these three uh, plain text messages or this diagraph pairs have illustrated the three rules but then we can have other instances which I will also illustrate so for example let's try to encrypt OL and you find that when we're encrypting OL so let us first locate where OL is in our table O is on the fourth row and L is right here on the first on the first row so to encrypt OL since they're on different rows and they're also on different columns it means that we'll replace them with the elements at the direct ends so at the corners as the third rule suggests so let's just form a quick rectangle around O and L so O will be encrypted to N and L will be encrypted to NA which means our cipher text message is O has been encrypted to N and L has been encrypted to NA and the last thing that I'll be illustrating is XD for the plain text that we have so with XD we identify the position so our X is right here on the second row and our D is on the third row so this will also implement the third rule which states that if they're on different rows and different columns you simply replace them with the letters at their direct corners so X will be encrypted to E and D will be encrypted to G and this will be the cipher text for XG so those examples illustrate all the scenarios that you can come across with the plain text message hide the gold in the tree stamp and if you implement those you find that this will be your cipher text so HI will be encrypted to PM ED will be encrypted to this and these will all follow the same rules that I've already explained so there's no need for me to uh, explain every single scenario you can try this out on your own however we'll be trying these two special cases so we'll try OV and GH just to show how we can encrypt letters that are at the edges so first of all we'll start with OV so with OV you find that O is right here on the fourth row and V is on the fifth row so la since they're on the same column we'll be implementing the second rule which states that you replace them with the letters that are directly below which means O will be encrypted to V and V will be encrypted to an A so this is what I wanted to show if your letter is at the edge you simply move back to the first element in that column so V will be encrypted to A in that way the same applies for GH so if you're encrypting GH since these two are on a similar row they are on the same row which means that the first rule will apply again in this scenario so G will simply be encrypted to an H and the H because it is at the edge will be encrypted to the first element in that row so H will be encrypted to a B 
So these are some of the other scenarios that I just wanted to show you when you're encrypting uh, a message with uh, Playfair Cypher. If your plain text element is at the edge, you simply have to move to the letter at the first or at the start of the column or at the start of the row, depending on which rule you're using. So this shows that the message hide the gold in the tree stamp will be encrypted to BMs, ODZ, and all these other elements. So this is the cipher text message that has been generated from the original plain text message. And as you can see, as before, this cipher text message was in the form of pairs. But just to make decryption slightly harder for somebody who may try to intercept the message, we have simply placed them in groups of five, groups of six, groups of seven, in whatever order, just to make decryption that much harder for an interceptor. So now that we have encrypted our message, how can we decrypt the message? So for f by now it could be rather obvious that decryption is simply the opposite of encryption. Likewise, when you're decrypting, you have the same key, which means that you come up with the same 5x5 five five table. So the receiver at the receiving end will be required to come up with this exact same 5x5 five five table to decrypt the message. And the only difference is that instead of having uh, the plain text, the receiver or the recipient will be working with the cipher text. So the recipient will have received the B, M, O, D, Z, B, Z, X. So the recipient will have received this message. And the third thing is that the opposite rules will simply apply. And what do we mean by the opposite rules? So the decryption rules, which are simply the opposite rules, have been listed in this segment. So the first rule is that if the letters appear on the same row of your table, you simply replace them with the letters to the immediate left. So when we're encrypting, we're going to the right, but then when you're decrypting, which is the opposite, you simply have to move to the left. So another thing to note is that your cipher text also has to be divided into letter pairs for this uh, decryption to work, since it works on digraphs. And the second rule has simply been changed here. Instead of moving to the element below, we'll be moving to the element immediately above, which is simply the opposite. And the last rule will remain the same because if you move to the edge, the right edge when you're encrypting, you'd simply have to move to the, uh, when if you move to the right edge when you're encrypting, you'd simply have to move to the left edge when you're decrypting. So the third rule will pretty much stay the same. So having done this, one last thing you have to note with decryption is that since we were appending an X, where if we have an odd number of elements and we also append an X in between double letters. So if you have EE, we're appending an X in between the two E's just to make decryption for an interceptor harder. If you come up with your plain text message, you'll find that it might not make sense in some occurrences. For example, the message hide the gold in the tree stamp will be hide the gold in the, here instead of tree, you have T-R-E-X-E, -E, right? So all you have to take note is that if you have some X's that do not make sense, you simply have to remove those X's from your plain text elements having after you have performed the decryption and you'll be able to come up with a plain text message that actually makes sense. So having reached this far, this is the end of this video. Uh, for those of you who liked it, you can like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos. And if you have any questions, you can write them down below and I'll be sure to answer them in the comment section. So yeah. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.